In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we begin these sacred three days, these great three days, the Triduum, we take time as we always do when we begin our celebration of worship by humbly calling to mind ways in which we have failed to live out our discipleship, ways we have failed to live out the love of God within us and share it with others. We take time now to call to mind our sins as well as God's grace, abundant grace that is here for us to strengthen us in holiness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. 
we praise God in song. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of per persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herb. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals 
upon your feet and your staff in hand. You shall eat it like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord? for his goodness to me. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of the Lord. Oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord, you have loosened all my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of the Lord. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos, yo recibí del Señor lo mismo que les he transmitido, que el Señor, la noche en que iba a ser entregado, tomó pan en sus manos y pronunciando la acción de gracias, lo partió y dijo, esto es mi cuerpo, que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. Lo mismo hizo con el cáliz después de cenar diciendo, este cáliz es la nueva alianza que se sella con mi sangre. Hagan esto en memoria mía siempre que beban de él. Por eso, cada vez que ustedes comen de este pan y beben de este cáliz, proclaman la muerte del Señor hasta que vuelva. Palabra de Dios. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I 
give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own who were in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon, the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. And for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Part of being human is being subject and slave to something or to somewhere, to a circumstance, or to someone. I am physically limited by a bad right knee and by an absolutely atrocious nearsightedness. Our broadcast here from the church is limited by our internet connection and the combined patience, lack thereof, of all parties involved. Many people are limited by the place where they come from and the family into which they are born from ever achieving what they could be and what good things they could do in life. Many are trapped by relationships, manipulative and stifling, that stunt love from ever spreading its wings. And to a certain degree, we are all captive prisoners in our homes right now. And realizing exactly just how much beyond our control, we find out that we can be subject to fear. Fear of sickness, fear of want, Fear of loneliness. We can fear death. All of us are subject and slave to so much in the world, insofar as there is still so much in the world that needs saving, that needs redemption, that needs a Passover. The Hebrews themselves were subject and slave to Pharaoh. And so the first Passover was a meal blessing God for the freedom that he was giving that he would give, and the deliverance from that danger. And the Passovers to come were the remembrance of that freedom and the calling upon God and the looking forward to the future and the fullness of that same freedom. And so whether it's that first Hebrew Passover or for our Passover as Christians, our Pascha that we celebrate 
the ability to bless and to give thanks to God even in the midst of these uncertainties and pains and constraints draws us toward our own freedom as it did for Moses and for the Hebrews. It is so precisely because of what we give thanks for. Freedom given to us through Jesus. Freedom. But that's about the point when we stand back and see the strangeness and the novelty of our Passover and our Passover lamb. Our Passover in Christ, our Pascha, has no ten plagues as with Moses and with Pharaoh, no overwhelming displays of power and might as we expect power and might to be shown. It's not freedom through domination, but rather in our Passover, we see Jesus and we remember him. We remember his life and all of its confusing lowliness and humility and the way that he has brought us freedom by becoming subject and slave. We remember that letter from St. Paul to the Philippians where St. Paul wrote, Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and coming in human likeness. He was found in human appearance and he humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death, death on a cross. Which is to say that we remember the way here in which God himself, in the person of Jesus, has entered into all the limitations of being a human in a fallen world like ours is. He has entered into all the pain, the suffering, the loneliness, the angst, the anguish, and he's opened our lives to so much more. We remember Jesus, who rose from the table that last supper, took off his outer garments, took a towel, tied it around his waist, and poured the water into a basin, washing the disciples' feet, drawing them with the towel around his waist, and commanding them and us to do the same, saying, If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you also should do for one another. This is, for John's Gospel, the same thing as saying, This is my body, given for you. This is who I am. My existence is for you. My heart is humbled and poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. Do this in remembrance of me. And so our lives take on that same flavor of humility and loneliness. It begins to taste true freedom and the promise of freedom to come then every time that we remember the Lord. Every time that we pour ourselves out, every time that we join our own heart in humble service to one another and acts of love in the same manner that Jesus did. And we gain freedom. Ultimately, freedom from death and the fear of death and all the way that death and decay and pain manifest itself in our lives. Yes, to be human is to be limited, but to be redeemed is to look forward and hope and say together with faith in Jesus, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. As we enter into the Passover of the Lord, let us intercede before God on behalf of all in the name of Jesus, our teacher and Lord. For the church and the global community brought closer this year through our common mortality. And we celebrate this triduum as a festival of deliverance and new life. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are affected by the COVID-19 virus, may the ill find strength in Jesus' passion, and may medical personnel be kept safe as they treat the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who long to be baptized and those who await to be united more fully in the faith, may the delay of their initiation caused by the pandemic lead for a deeper hunger for God, a deeper appreciation of this Paschal mystery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those ordained to preside at the altar of Christ's sacrifice and supper, we pray especially for the Paulist Fathers. May they fulfill the love of God they celebrate in these mysteries through their lives of service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us, as we continue to live in this period of separation and isolation, may our hope be in Christ, who loves his own in this world and who will, who will love us to the end. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have departed this world to go to the Father, especially those who have died these past weeks from the COVID-19 virus, and for all our loved ones who have died, may they come to share fully in Christ's Paschal victory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. May these prayers be united to the prayers of our patron, St. Paul, and servant of God, Father Isaac Hecker. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Hear the prayers of your disciples of today, Lord God, and answer these prayers in your time and in your way. Grant us the grace to help us accept whatever answers you grant us. We ask this through your Son, the Christ, our Passover and our peace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that these, our gifts, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sanctified for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Leni sunt celi et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants now living, especially those who are ill with the COVID-19 virus. Remember all gathered here and those in their homes praying with us here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all the saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, 
and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace, especially those who have died during this pandemic. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we now pray the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer those around us, wherever we are, a sign of Christ's peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. No final blessing, thank you. Sorry, no final blessing. I do